Greetings from Lakeside Packaging Plus and Big Lake A-Team Wisconsin. It's my distinct pleasure to introduce our featured guest author, Laurel Mills. Laurel will be reading from her book, Rumor of Hope, which won the 2012 Encircle Publication Chapbook Contest and the 2013 Wisconsin Fellowship of Poets Chapbook Prize and the 2013 Wisconsin Library Association Outstanding Achievement Award, and her 2015 publication, Hidden Seed, which won the Posner Poetry Award. Laurel is also the author of three novels, Undercurrents, Taking Flight, and Racing Towards Providence. She is also an accomplished teacher and editor. This is our author, Laurel Mills, mother of associate Beth. Today I'm going to read poems from my two books, Hidden Seed and Rumor of Hope. These poems are about my daughter, Beth, who has the genetic disorder 1T36 deletion syndrome. Beth is developmentally disabled, has severe behavioral issues, and requires round-the-clock supervision. In spite of her disability, Beth has a fun and delightful personality. Over the years, we've learned to celebrate all her small successes. Beth is 50 now and works at Lakeside Packaging Plus. Community-based employment has been a godsend for her. The staff recognize her limitations and her abilities and design a safe place for her to work and feel productive. Having the choice to work at LPP helps give her life meaning. Work, hers and mine. I scour Lake Michigan for poems. While at school, Beth learns work. She didn't walk until she was three. Now she carries newspapers to 63 houses, her hands black with ink. The teacher dogs her tracks, warning her to lift her head at street corners. I cross the sand. Remember the year she buried her beach ball, and we dug hole after hole, searching for it. She brings that same insistence to scrubbing bathroom floors, cafeteria tables. Once she sat for hours and hurled stones into the lake leaving a ball place around her. Now she sits and fits washers on a wooden peg, collates pages. These tasks are not too small. When asked if she likes her job, she says, yes, me no fired. When the lake whispers, do I love her? I say, yes, I am proud. I draw her name on the beach. She painstakingly prints it on the back of a check. And this red stone at my feet is my heart the lake tosses up to her. This poem is called Lincoln School Graduation. And it's about uh, Beth graduating from her special needs school. In this gym, therapeutic trampolines and leg braces have been pushed aside for the hundred of us come to applaud and to get something to hold in our own dark nights. The music starts and the boy with the flag makes a wrong turn. The four graduates march in, a speechless girl in a wheelchair, an artistic boy, Beth with roses on her wrist, and the boy she always dances with. She spots me in the front row, calls out, Me big presents? I nod and smile. She finds her seat on stage. When her name is called, Beth Marie Mills, she stands to the cheering and, for a girl who never learned to cry, her own new tears. In this complete moment, I forgive the doctor who declared she never be anything. As music pulls graduates down the middle aisle, I catch her dad's full eyes, 
her blonde sister smiling, linking us, this child, in the tasseled cap. I thought if I was going to write a book of poems about Beth that she should have her say, so I asked her to tell me about her job. Beth speaking, uh, um, I talk you, I go work, my group home go bus, quarter in hole, my job, knives, forks, spoons, in box. Boss ladies say, Beth, no talk. Me work hard, hot sweat. No little kid no more, woman, big. I go work, take break, my friends, pack my lunch, ham, cheese, chips, pop and sheen, quarter. Boss ladies say, okay, talk. Go my group home, bus, wait. Me thinking, like my job. Beth has lived in a group home uh, for a good part of her life. And it's been a wonderful thing for her because she gets a chance to have a pretty normal life with her peers. But this poem is about her running away from her group home. And it shows uh, how necessary it is to have for her to have constant uh, supervision and how little she knows about the real world. Running away. Last week, my daughter wandered from her group home, away from the blue house with its aroma of stew and the prattle of her friends. She walked away from the aide who was her keeper, out the door, past hanging pots of pink azalea, down the long sloping driveway toward the busy road at the bottom of the hill. When she walked into the line of traffic, cars whizzing by in both directions, a cardinal was singing and chicory lined the roadside. And when the police car came, the sun shone in a sky that was unblemished and pure, not one hint of the dangers in the world. This is a poem about uh, picking Beth up at her group home and taking her for a ride. And she brings her doll, Edie, along with her. A weekend drive. Beth settles her doll into the back seat. She pulls a seat belt across the belly, the rubber arms. There, Edie, she says, safe. Then she buckles herself beside her baby. As I slip into the driver's seat, I watch her sneak a glance at herself in the rearview mirror. See the asymmetrical grin, the wink she gives her reflected face. Perhaps she's learning at 40 to love herself. In the mirror, I see her smile, mouth bluish with eyeshadow from the tube she mistook for lipstick. She turns to her doll, patting the cloth tummy. Good girl, Edie, she says. It's been delightful to see Beth come into herself. This poem is called The New It Girl. She wears her 40s like a good dress, jaunty and swinging in the breeze. Her hair is in a ponytail, done up in ribbons by her group home staff. She's into makeup, green eyeshadow, blue nail polish, rouge on the cheekbones. She's got her tennis racket, bowling bag, her tickets to the movies, money for popcorn. She's carrying a pink plaid purse, her Walkman and headphones. She's got music to go and a guitar at home. She's got jazz, pizzazz, razzmatazz, She's riding a three-wheel bike with a pink flag and in the basket, her baby doll. Beth likes to wear rings on her fingers. And when I say, Beth, where'd you get the ring? She always says, my husband. And so when I ask, who's your husband? She says, I don't know. So I thought it would be fun to imagine what her life might have been like if she did have a husband and they had their own little house. This is called The Imaginary Husband. The ring on her finger is the size of Texas, plastic, 
red and blue, a lone star from the vending machine. My wedding ring, she says, Bob, my husband. When asked to give Bob's last name, she looks away and shrugs, I don't know. Maybe this is her fantasy life. She has a dog and two cats. The cat's names are Fluffy and Nutty. The dog is a Brittany Spaniel and sleeps on their bed at night near Bob's feet. The, bo the dog stirs when Bob shifts to wrap his arm around Beth. When the sun comes up, Bob kisses Beth on the fragile line of her collarbone. He makes scrambled eggs with shredded cheese and shallots. She makes cinnamon toast. They eat on the front porch and wave to the paper boy when he bicycles past. All day at the sheltered workshop, Beth thinks of Bob and plans their supper. They like to do the dishes together, though they argue about who washes and who dries. They tell about their day, all the little gossips. Fluffy and Nutty meow around their legs. The dog waits for a walk around the block when Bob and Beth go howdy at neighbors. They take their coffee to the little garden at the back of the house. Bob nips the dried geranium. Beth pulls a thistle from the nasturtiums. Curled on the brick patio, dreaming of rabbits, the dog farts in his sleep. This is the story of their life together. The story of Mr. and Mrs. I don't know, and their very ordinary days. Death is born. One wrong moment in the womb when cells meet. A small breath missed on the journey out. A squeeze of forceps. This night spins with ether. Death struggles down from the warm, safe place. Her mouth sucks sharp air into her cobweb lungs. Her stiff legs are thrown into space. I hear the daughter's slap, slap, a long silence. Then her cry, faint as the sound of mushrooms growing in a damp wood. In the words that change our lives, this is a sleepy baby. Outside, the world keeps spinning, and a different child is here, teaching Beth to walk. When she is two, we plant the house with animal crackers. They roar and bleat for her to follow. Finally, we teach her to crawl, to pull herself up on the couch. I call social workers. Surely they have tricks. I scrub the house, bathe Beth, set her in her pink high chair. But when I let those two women in, Beth has stuffed her nose and ears with chocolate cake. I take her from doctor to doctor. They pat, they pat my arm and say, take her home and love her. Could the stars burn hotter? Already my love is greater than light thrown from the sun. Where have I failed, my little rubber legs, my sleepy brain? At the end of Church Street, Ken spends the day harvesting tomatoes, dries them on the front porch. When he steps inside for iced tea, Beth bites each one. He comes back to 37 red mouths gaping. I rush money over, but he just laughs, says something about tomato stew, about us being new in the neighborhood. Then Beth takes a swipe with white paint on the red shed he spent all spring building. He chuckles, gives her a bucket, shows her how to pluck eggs. Every morning, she barrels into Ken's house for his wife's banana bread. Then they walk to the barn, Beth bragging, me help Ken eggs. From then on, every important man in her life will be Ken, bus driver, 
firemen at Lions Camp. When the council asks kids to call out their names, she yells, Ken! Long after Beth moves away, she dreams of a bald man opening his hands, a yellow chick hatching. From hearing the story of Beth's life, you can see how important it is for her as a grown woman now to have a place where she can come to work every day. She's with her peers, her friends. She has staff who cares for her sincerely and genuinely care for her. And they are willing to design a program to work around her disability and her behavioral issues. So I pray every day when I go to bed at night, please keep the workshops open for Beth. Thank you.